Before I Wake is directed by Mike Flanagan, and it stars Kate Bosworth, Thomas Jane, and Jacob Tremblay. And it is technically the second film that Mike Flanagan made, even though it's coming out in the order of being the fifth, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Before I Wake is about a couple, played by Kate Bosworth and Thomas Jane, who after their death of their son, take in Cody Morgan, a foster child played by Jacob Tremblay. They quickly discover that Cody has an ability. While he sleeps, he's able to project his dreams into the real world including being able to mentally project images of their lost child so that they can see him again. However, with this gift also comes a terrible curse because his nightmares are projected as well, including the predominant monster of his nightmares Cody calls the Canker Man. The Canker Man, it turns out, has killed Cody's previous foster parents as well as the wife of the previous foster father before them. And so it's up to Kate Bosworth to try to figure out what exactly is going on with this child to hopefully save herself and her husband. Now, as I mentioned before, this is technically Mike Flanagan's second film because this was supposed to come out back in 2014 after his film Oculus came out. But due to the studio that bought the rights, kind of pushing it back to 2015 and then eventually actually going bankrupt. And the only reason it's even released now is because Netflix actually bought the rights after... They produced both his films, Hush and Gerald's Game, that came out last year. Two terrific thrillers as well. And I'll talk about Mike Flanagan in a second. So we can thank Netflix for the fact that people can even see this movie. And I'm really happy about that, because this is a really good horror film. Mike Flanagan is a young, up-and-coming horror director that I could honestly see going and becoming some sort of a master of horror in his own right, eventually. Because every one of his movies so far have been really good psychological horror thrillers that don't have the genuine jump scares, the typical horror tropes you see in modern horror or even horror of the past, but it really takes ideas of horror and does something interesting with them to give it a psychological bend, make you wonder what's really going on, what's really going on behind the mask, so to speak. And I really enjoy that he does that so well. Oculus, his first film, did that brilliantly in taking such a simple and silly sounding concept of a haunted mirror and really making you wonder what's reality? What actually is going on to these people? Are they seeing things? Are they themselves insane? Or is this mirror actually manipulating their environment without giving anything away? That is a fantastic horror film. I mean, he took one of the most notorious, terrible horror films to come out in recent years and made a prequel to it that not only surpassed it, but did a complete 180 and did everything right that that movie did wrong because you really love the characters in Ouija Origin of Evil. And it is genuinely scary and suspenseful. That's a really good horror movie and one of the best turnarounds in a series I think I've ever seen in my life. From a really mediocre original. I mean, other than Star Trek Wrath of Khan to Star Trek The Motion Picture. I think that's the only other one I could think of where it's that giant of a leap from sequel, well, prequel, from original. This guy's really good at his craft. He knows how to build suspense, and he knows how to really mess with your head when it's necessary in his movies, and he does both of those really well here in Before I Wake. Also, the acting in this film is incredible. Both Kate Bosworth and Thomas Jane are incredible in this movie, especially Kate Bosworth. You really feel for her as she is grieving over the loss of her only child. She keeps imagining her son at, in his final moments because he died in this really tragic, horrible way. And then, of course, when Cody comes into the picture here, and I'll get to Jacob Tremblay's performance in a moment, but you really see, like, their turmoil as they realize, of course, that this kid's dreams can manifest into some sort of a reality where they can actually interact, and then he finds out about their son, so he starts dreaming about their son. And it's really touching and just heart-wrenching to watch these pa grieving parents. And what she does later on in the film that I don't want to ruin for anyone, you can see why she did it because the grief was just compounding in on her and just tearing her apart. And so you can see why she does what she does. And it's a really, this is an emotional horror movie. And that's a weird thing to say. Horror movies is usually scary. And that's it. So it's best of all scary Maybe funny, but never really makes you tear up. And while I didn't tear up, I got close a few times. It's a really sad freaking horror movie. Because even though it has the image of 
you know, monsters and stuff coming after people. It still plays on real human emotion, real grief, real just repressed memories also comes into play later on. I don't want to ruin because that's part of stuff later on. Also with the dreams manifesting in reality, it did kind of remind me of Nightmare on Elm Street, of course, because I guess every horror film nowadays reminds me of Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, I guess it's really just last year's It and this, so really just two, but I, I don't know. I just, I love those movies, so of course this made me think of that, you know, kid can dream and his dreams become reality and you can touch them, and of course, the nightmare monster, the canker man, comes in. And I love how he's introduced. First of all, we get a great opening sequence with uh, Cody's first foster father. After, well, we'll find out what happened to him later, what led him to these events. But basically, it looks like this guy has gone insane. Like, he's about to basically pull an Amityville horror or The Shining and try to kill this kid. And then it cuts, and we don't really know what happened to him. And we find out later what happened. But... That is a chilly moment. It just makes you, for the whole rest of the movie, just want to know what the hell was going on in that opening scene. Because it takes a while to get back to the monster. But, and I, I don't say that in a bad way. I never get bored by that, by the way. But it is a great little hook. Because even though you're seeing all this niceness and all this bittersweet and emotional stuff, it's almost like, what the hell was with that opening scene? Wait, what? When are we going to get back to that? And then starts trickling in the nightmare, the canker man in the background. And I love how they first kind of introduce it. It's only kind of in the background. It's a lot of like stuff John Carpenter did with the original Halloween, another classic horror film. And it's great because it doesn't draw your attention to the character. Mike Flanagan was very smart with this. There's no music sting, really. There's no real, like, look, the monster's back there. Oh, no, it's going to get someone. It's just there, and if you notice it, great. If you don't, it's fine. But I think it's creepier because it's just kind of there, and you're just watching them go about their business in the middle of the night, and then it's like, whoa, wait, what was that? And then you have to rewind and go, oh, my God, there's a monster there. Um, <laughs> and that was a nice touch. I love when horror movies can do that really well. It's a nice little touch. It's very much like Halloween, which did it masterfully. And it does it well here as well. Now, as I said, I was going to get to Jacob Tremblay. And I think I put this off enough. Jacob Tremblay is honestly one of the best child actors working today. He was just in last year. He was in Wonder, of course, one of the best movies that got nominated for several awards a couple years ago. And Brie Larson won for Best Actress. Uh, Rue? Amazing film. That is a, that's another heart-wrenching emotional freaking roller coaster I guess of a movie that's a great film definitely check that one out and he is wonderful here he's actually about probably I was I think he's got to be about the same age like he was in that movie considering when they filmed this and he's not only a great actor he's freaking adorable in this movie um but he really makes you care about him you know he's very quiet and reserved because he knows this stuff has been going on and he always you know he'll always come in and just be apologetic and to whatever the nightmare was because he he can't control this obviously he's just this innocent kid he's not trying to do this and you so you feel bad for him that he has to basically has this thing that is both a gift sure but it can also be a curse all these characters you really feel for and that is the best thing about great horror when you can care about the characters and i was surprised how freaking emotionally gripping it was too because I'm not used to that in horror movies. I'm used to that in drama, sports movies. It's usually sports movies and stuff. So for that to be in a horror movie, that was surprising and quite welcoming to have someone like that. I think this movie is terrific. I don't really want to spoil a whole lot more because I just want you to turn this freaking video off, bring up Netflix and watch the damn movie already. What are you doing watching me? Watch the movie already. It's freaking amazing. I'm going to give this four and a half stars. This movie was incredible, and I'm so happy. This started off my year of 2018. Because usually we get a lot of crap in the beginning, but hey, we got Before I Wake right off the bat. So I'm kind of looking forward to this year, actually. It's four and a half stars, guys. Go see it right now. Just shut off this video. Stop watching me. Like, actually, don't stop just yet. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. I've got more reviews coming. I'm going to try to get these out a little bit better paced. But I got more reviews, so like, comment, subscribe to this video, and comment once you've watched Before I Wake, because I really think you ought to watch Before I Wake. I can't stress that enough. Uh, please, comment down below and tell me what your th thoughts are. Tell me what you thought of this movie. I thought this movie was incredible. 
But let me know what you think, and check out some of Mike Flanagan's art films, because I honestly do think he's an incredible young horror director that is probably going places. I'm done with this review. Go watch Before I Wake, and like, comment, subscribe. See ya. <laughs>